Hi, this is Chef Mark Tafoya from Remarkable Palette Personal Chef Service in New York City. Today I'm going to show you how to make flour tortillas at home. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico originally, and you know we have such an amazing mix of cultures there, from the Native American Pueblo Indians to Spanish colonial settlers like my ancestors and Anglos. We also have people from all over Latin America and Mexico, and one of the most important foundational aspects of our cuisine is the tortilla. Today I'm going to show you how to make flour tortillas at home. So for this recipe, you'll need two cups or 250 grams of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon or five grams of baking powder, one teaspoon, five grams of salt, or one tablespoon, which is about 15 milliliters of shortening or lard. The traditional use is lard, but you can use vegetable shortening if you like. There's also three quarters cup or 125 milliliters of lukewarm water. Now to start with, we're gonna mix together our dry ingredients and we're gonna sift them into the bowl. So we're gonna start with the two cups of all-purpose flour and you can just kind of put that into your sifter as the base there. And then we're gonna do the baking powder. Baking powder is a mixture of an acid, a base, and a filler. So usually that involves baking soda, which is the base, uh, cream of tartar, which is the acid, and cornstarch, which is the filler. And baking powder works in two ways, double acting. The first one is it starts to activate and rise with carbon dioxide bubbles when it gets wet. The second action is when it gets hot. So we're going to see both of those today. So I've added the salt as well, and I'm just going to sift those together. So all three of those components are going to get gently aerated and put into the bowl all together you can get rid of any lumps sometimes you get some lumps at the end you just kind of press those through and you're done so you've got your dry ingredients all in the bowl then we're going to now mix in our shortening or lard you know again traditionally in mexico they would use lard here you can use a uh, vegetable shortening and how we're going to do this is this fat is going to get incorporated into the bread mixture or the uh, flour mixture and we're going to knead it together until it's all mixed in there. You want to get every bit of the fat molecules mixed in with as much of the flour as you can until it resembles coarse breadcrumbs and you can see we start to get a little bit of the breadcrumbs in there. Okay, I've got my dry ingredients blended with my fat, and now I'm just gonna add the water. I've got three quarter cup or about 125 milliliters of water. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna blend that in until I get really a kind of a sticky dough. And at first it's gonna be pretty sticky. You gotta kind of mix it in there with your fingers and get it incorporated. You're basically in starting to develop the gluten. The baking powder, as I said, has a double action. So the first action, the carbon dioxide bubbles start to get released when you add liquid. So now that we're added the water, that's going to start a little bit of leavening action. And of course, it'll, it'll finish itself off when we heat it up. But right now we're just gonna mix this in until we've got a sticky dough. If you need to add a tiny bit more water, you can, but you wanna do it a little bit at a time. You want the dough to be a little bit sticky, but not too sticky. All right, so to get my dough right, I'm gonna need to add just a, tad, a little tad more of water to incorporate the rest of that flour you see in the bottom of the bowl there. Okay, and like I said, it's a little sticky, but don't worry. We're gonna work that through. So just work it together. And then after it's come together, I'm gonna to knead it on a floured surface. Okay, I've brought my dough together, basically. And now I'm just gonna sprinkle just a little bit of flour on my work surface. Not too much, you can push a little bit over here to the side. And then I'm gonna take my sticky dough and we're gonna knead it on that surface. Okay, we're gonna incorporate a little bit of the flour that's there on the surface as we knead it together. And just, we're just bringing it together. We're not kneading it the way we would a bread dough. This is tortillas. There we go, roll that around. And then the little bits that stick to your fingers, you can just kind of pull off and incorporate that back into your dough. If it gets too sticky, just get it on the dry part and move it about. Okay, now you find you have little bits that stick to your fingers. You can look, just kind of rub them as if you're washing your hands and get all those little extra bits of flour off your fingers. 
and then you can put that right onto the dough there and we're just gonna knead this for about one minute and you know kneading is just this folding action so you're gonna take one side fold it into the other you know you're continuing to incorporate the little bit of the dry flour that's still there but mostly at this point we're developing the gluten that's what you know makes it gives it its chewiness or its firmness okay we're gonna do this for one minute and then we're gonna let the dough rest for 15 minutes at room temperature okay well our dough has been resting for about 15 minutes you always want to rest a dough because after you've developed the glutens you want to give them a minute to retract okay so you got this beautiful kind of supple uh, flour dough and you want to pinch off about I don't know an egg shaped size around that much um, of the dough okay and you're gonna have a, a lightly floured surface here okay and you kind of press it into a disc and you can you can kind of start the tortilla in your hands you know and get, kind of flap it back and forth it's got some stretch to it because we've developed the gluten you can kind of do like that and then we're going to use a rolling pin and we're just going to kind of roll it until we've got it about an eighth of an inch thick now you see each time it goes we're going to rotate it just a bit and it gonna, it's gonna retract a bit. So you always wanna roll it out a little bit wider than you think you need it. Now, I haven't been making tortillas every day, so my roundness isn't as great as it could be. <laughs> you see that the abuelitas who are making these tortillas every single day, they make them perfectly round when they roll them out by hand like this. But this is a nice size and a general shape. You know, the thing about tortillas is you wanna always have a rustic sense to them. So you can always, you know, if they're misshapen a little bit, that's not so bad. I'm sure my next one will be rounder. But there you go. This is about eight to 10, maybe even 12 inches total. And it's nearly ready. You always wanna press from the center in towards the edges. Okay, and then we've got our beautiful tortilla. It's ready for the comal. All right, so I've got a cast iron pan here. Uh, traditionally, we would use a comal, which is a thick, heavy, big iron skillet, but a, a cast iron is perfectly fine. It's thick, it's uh, well seasoned, and it's dry. We don't have any fat in it whatsoever. I've been heating it over medium high heat. You want it to be probably around, I don't know, around 500 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Not too hot, but you want it to, to be hot because we're gonna cook rather quickly. And you just place your tortilla right in the pan there and let it just lay flat. Okay, you can see my bubbles are really getting big now, so it's time to turn it. See, beautiful. You got a few brown spots. It's kind of dried out on this side. It's not too brown. You don't want it to burn it, but you want to just get it lightly toasted. And you see the edges begin to kind of curl up a bit. Again, you can just kind of rotate it in the pan just a bit. Okay, so I'm rotating it a bit. You see there's nice some nice brown spots on those sides. That's ready to rock and roll. It's nice and hot. I'm putting it right into a bowl with a towel and then I'm gonna fold that over. It's gonna stay warm. There's carryover cooking, so it'll continue to cook a little bit and, and stay real moist. Okay, I want you to see this other angle so you can get it up close. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just sort of gently flattening it. You can do it between your palms or you can rotate it like this like you would a, a pizza dough just to get the circle started and then again we've got some flour down on our cutting board and you're just gonna from the center press out very gently a couple of presses each time you're not stretching it too much at each pass but the totality of all of the passes will eventually make this disc a full size tortilla now these this size that we're making can be you know of course used for burritos they can be used for larger size tacos for quesadillas something like that if you were going to use these for a taco you could pinch off slightly smaller sizes and make your your taco around uh, five to six inches the same size as those corn tortillas that we made earlier all right there you go and again hot dry pan we're just gonna place our tortilla straight down on there and give it a little rotation and let it go. You can see those bubbles start to form. That's beautiful. You don't wanna turn it yet, but I like to rotate it so we get even brownness. 
Okay, now this guy really puffed up. You see, that's nice. Se quiere levantar, as we said with the corn tortillas. And there you go, you get some nice spots on there. People like to joke about the different patterns they see in there, like a Rorschach block. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep making tortillas here. And uh, I just, it's been such a pleasure showing you how to make these lovely, amazing, fresh, homemade flour tortillas. For more information, you can find my website at remarkablepalette.com or you can find me on social media, Chef Mark, at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.